Same supercharger, same intercooler, same pulleys. Check out this comparison between a 4.8 liter and a bigger 6.0. In this video, we compared a modified 4.8 to a modified 6 liter, both NA and under boost. Both motors were run with the same supercharger, intercooler, and pulleys. So what happened to power and boost when we stepped up from the 4.8 to the larger, more powerful 6 liter? Before we get to our test results, we need to take a look at our test motor. The first test motor was a modified 4.8 liter LR4. Now the short block had been previously modified with a set of JE forged pistons. Those forged pistons featured 7cc domes, so the compression ratio was a little higher than stock. That combination was also equipped with a set of TrickFlow 205 heads. Although, in all honesty, the 4.8 really didn't need those heads. Stock heads would work just as well at this power level. We did equip this combination with a good cam, a positive displacement cam from LJMS. That cam featured a 610-586 lift split, a 223-238 degree duration split, and a 120 degree lobe separation. It was designed specifically for a blower application, although a positive displacement blower, not a centrifugal blower like we ran. Now our 4.8 also featured a factory truck intake, engine 7 8 headers, and a standalone management system that allowed us to dial in the air fuel and timing of both combinations. Test motor number two was a larger 6 liter. The 6 liter featured forged internals from Carrillo and CP, including flat top pistons. Topping that motor was a set of ported 243 heads from Total Engine Airflow. Unlike the 4.8, the 6 liter could definitely take advantage of those stage 2 ported 243 heads. Now, unlike the 4.8, the camshaft used in the 6 liter was not designed for a blower application, but the 469 cam from Comp Cams still worked well. It featured a 617 624 lift split, a 231 247 degree duration split, and a 113 degree lobe separation angle. Like the 4.8, the 6 liter was also run with the early truck intake manifold and inch and 7 8 headers. We also had a standalone hauling management system to dial in the air fuel and timing both on the NA and supercharged combinations. Now naturally, both combinations had big enough injectors to support the eventual supercharged power output. So let's take a look at the NA combinations and the difference between the 4.8 and 6 liter before adding boost. Okay, our first test was to compare the modified 4.8 liter to the 6 liter naturally aspirated for adding boost. So here is our 4.8 liter, a modified 4.8 liter. The 4.8 liter produced 397 horsepower at 6,400 RPM and 353 foot pounds of torque at 5,600 RPM. You'll notice both the like the horsepower or the torque peak occurred fairly high in the RPM range and that's kind of typical with that blower cam. It wants to rev, it doesn't produce a bunch of a torque in the middle and down low. Um, the wide lobe separation makes it want to make power at the very top. So that 4.8 was nearly a 400 horsepower motor, 350 plus foot pounds of torque. So now let's see NA, how it compared to the six liter. So our modified six liter produced 549 horsepower at 6,900 RPM and 481 foot-pounds of torque. And if we take a look at that, um, both of them had ported heads, although in reality the ported heads help a lot less on the 4.8 because it doesn't really need that kind of airflow. Uh, the stock head would be like a stock 706 or 862 head would be more than enough airflow for that little 4.8, so the ported head really wasn't doing much there. And they both were equipped with truck intake manifolds, the early truck, not the TBSS. And both of them had long tube headers and stuff as they were run NA. So now let's take a look and see what happens after we add boost. So right now we've got a difference of about 150 horsepower NA. So now let's see what happens after we run the Vortec. Now that we've compared the modified 4.8 liter to the modified 6 liter, naturally aspirated, it's time for some boost. Boost for our motors was supplied by the same Vortec TI centrifugal supercharger. That boost was fed through an air to water intercooler from CX Racing. And both combinations were equipped with the same pulleys, 7.5 inch crank pulley and 3.8 inch blower pulley, meaning the blower spun the same speed both on the 4.8 and the 6 liter. So now let's find out how they did 
under boost. Okay, here's what happened when we installed the Vortec supercharger on the 4.8 liter first. This was a TI trim Vortec. It was equipped with a seven and a half inch crank pulley and a 3.8 inch blower pulley. This combination produced 746 horsepower. Let me get rid of the uh, fuel flow there. It's a little better to see. 746 horsepower at 6700, and you can see the power curve was still climbing, but we shut off there. And 592 foot-pounds of torque at 6300. On that run, the boosts climbed from 3.1 pounds up to 15.4 at 6700. So we had a nice little, you know, about a 750 horsepower 4.8 with the Vortec on it and an air-to-water intercooler. Worked out very well. So now let's take a look and see what happens when we ran the same supercharger, same intercooler, same pulleys, but we did that on the more powerful six liter. So as you can see, just like it did at NA, equipped with the same supercharger, same combination, the larger, more powerful six liter produced 896 horsepower. So right at 900 horsepower, we shut it off at 6,500 and 725 foot pounds of torque. As you can see, the supercharged six liter produced about 150 more horsepower than the 4.8 liter. So almost exactly what it did when it was NA. And you're probably wondering, well, I thought that um, the gains are supposed to be multiplied by the boost. Well, they are. And we're gonna take a look at the boost curves to see what happened, even though these things ran the same supercharger, same intercooler, and same drive pulleys the boost was actually different on the two combinations. And the reason for that is obviously the power output. The greater the power output, the lower the boost is at any given blower speed. So now take a look at the power gains again from 746 up to 896 with the same pulleys. Let's take a look and see what happens uh, to the boost curves when we applied them to different motors. Now that we've taken a look at the power differences, both naturally aspirated and supercharged, Let's take a closer look at those boost curves. If we take a look at the boost curves supplied by the Vortex supercharger on each one of the combinations, on the 4.8 liter, the boost rose from 3.1 PSI down here at 3100, all the way up to a peak of 15.4 PSI up here at 6700. So it had a steady climb just like we'd expect from a centrifugal supercharger. Now, and that's on the 4.8 liter. Again, that's a Vortec TI trim with uh, an air to water intercooler on it and a 7.5, uh, 3.8 pulley combination. So let's take a look and see, here's what happened when we ran the same supercharger, pulleys, intercooler, everything on the six liter. So as you can see, there's a big difference in the boost. On the larger six liter, the boost started at 2.9 PSI, so not a big difference down low, but only rose to a peak of 12.8 PSI. Now we didn't run it quite as high as you can see up in this area, but even measured at the same point, at say 6,400 RPM, 12 and a half PSI for the six liter and 14.1 for the 4.8. So on the smaller motor, the supercharger was providing a lot more pressure. It basically just had more back pressure because the motor wasn't flowing as much. So, and that's what you want to do. If you can start out with a powerful naturally aspirated motor and then add boost to it, you're going to have a more effective combination. So as you can see, going from a 4.8 modified 4.8 to a modified six liter helps a lot, even with boost. Now, if we were to change the pulley and go up to make the boost even, the Supercharged six liter would make even more power. Um, we think we could get to a thousand horsepower with the six liter without any problem if we had a good uh, cog drive and stuff, so. Okay guys, what did we learn from this test? Well, let's start off with a question. Which would you rather have? A 750 horsepower 4.8 liter that requires over 15 pounds of boost or a 900 horsepower six liter that required less than 13 pounds of boost? You see, even with boost, if we apply that boost to a more powerful NA combination, we're gonna have a more powerful 
supercharged combination. In reality, it doesn't matter where the boost comes from, whether it's a turbo, centrifugal, or even positive displacement supercharger. If you apply that boost to a more powerful, naturally aspirated motor, good things are gonna happen. Let me show you with an example. Suppose we took our Vortex supercharger, capable of 1,000 horsepower, and applied it to a stock 4.8 liter. Now, we're never going to get to 1,000 horsepower with that combination. Even though the blower will support the airflow, the motor just can't process it. And that's something we saw in our comparison between the modified 4.8 and the modified 6 liter. The 6 liter was able to process that air, so the benefit was a bunch more power and lower boost pressure. So what's the takeaway from this video? Well, if you learn nothing else, learn this. It's much easier to reach any given power level with boost plus a more powerful NA motor than it is with boost plus a less powerful NA motor. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, but especially subscribe and comment because coming up in the next video, I compare a factory blower cam to an aftermarket blower cam to an aftermarket NA cam on a Whipple Supercharge 4.8.